session we have covered up to the how the keyboard works with the types of switches so in today's session let's continue uh, uh, let's continue with the uh, techniques of the keyboards so once the columns are found at all high the program enters in the loop which waits until a low appears on one of the columns indicating that a key has been pressed this second loop does the direct task for us a simple 20 milliseconds delay procedure that then does the debound task so after the debound time and the check is made to see if the keys is still pressed if the columns are now all high the no key is pressed and the initial detection was caused by a noise pulse or a light brushing past a key if any of the columns are still low, then the assumption is made that it was a valid key press. So the final task is to determine the row and column of the pressed key and converts this row and column information to the hex code. So for the pressed key, so this hex code will be generated for the pressed key only to get the row and column information. A row is output to one row and the column are red. If one of the columns is low, the first key is not is in that row so the row is rotated to the next row and the column is column are checked again the process is repeated until a row on a row produces a low on one of the column the first key then is in the row which is low at that time the connection to the shows the byte read in byte read in from the input port to Contain a 4 bit code which represents the row of the pressed key and a 4 bit code which is represent the column of the pressed key. Error trapping. So, the concept of detecting some error conditions such as no match found is called error trapping. Error trapping is a very important part of real programs, even in simple programs. Think what might happen with no error trap if two keys in the same row are pressed at exactly at the same time and a column code with two rows. In, in it was produced. So this this code would not match any of the row column codes in the table. So after all the values in the table were checked, the essential register in program would be decriminated from uh, 00H to FFFH. The compact decrement cycle would continue through 65,536 memory locations until by change the value in memory location match the row column code. The contents of the low, lower byte register at, at half point would be passed back to the column within. The changes are 1 in 256 that would, that would be the correct value for one of the pressed keys. You should keep an error track in your program whenever there is a chance for it. So keyboard interfacing with hardware. For the system where the CPU is too busy to be Bother to do these tasks in software, an external device is used to them. So one of the MOS device which can which can be do it is in general instrumentations AY 52376, which can be connected to the rows and columns of the keyboard switch matrix. The AY 52376 independently detects a key press by cycling a lowdown through the rows and checking the columns. When it finds a key pressed, it waits a rebound time. So if the key is still pressed after the debounce time, the AY52376 produces the 8-bit code for the pressed key and send it out to the microcomputer code on 8 parallel lines. The microcomputer knows that a valid ASCII code is on the data lines. The AY52376 outputs a stroke pulse. 
the biker calculator can detect this stroke once and read in ascii code on a cold basis or it can detect the stroke pulse on an interrupt basis so when the interrupt is occurred the biker calculator doesn't have to pay any attention to the keyboard until it receives an interrupt signal So this method uses very little of the microcomputer time. The so AI can do three seven six has a feature called two key rollout. This means that if two keys are passed at nearly at the same time, each key will be detected, debounced, and converted to ASCII. The ASCII code for the first key and the stroke signal for it will be sent out. Then the ASCII code for the second key and the stroke signal for it will be sent out and after two key logs. So here we can see the port connections of the input and output ports. Next examples. So let's see some of the examples of these interfacing of microprocessor to a keyboard. So interface a four into four keyboard with eight zero eight six using two eight two double five and type at an AMP for detecting a key closure and return the key to in AM. So here you have given the Problem statement and in the solution was also given.
The horizontal lines of port A and port B are left unreached. The address of port C and port B will respectively 800 H and 8002 8, H, while address of the CWR will be 8006 H. The following chart of the complete program is given below. The control word of this problem will be 82 H. Code segment CS is used for storing the program code. Rebounds. So whenever a mechanical push button is pressed or released once, the mechanical components of the keyboard change the position smoothly. Rather, it generates a transient response. So this is the flow chart.
These transient variations may be interpreted as the multiple key pressure, key pressure and the responded accordingly by the microprocessor system. To avoid this problem, two schemes are suggested. The first one utilizes a bistable multi vibrator at the output of the key to rebounds. The other scheme suggests that the microprocessor should be made, made to wait for the transient period so that the transient response settles down. It reaches a steady state. So a logic zero will be read by the microprocessor when the key is pressed. So in the number of high precision applications, it is given there are two options. The first one is to have more than one bit one bit port. So that is read or write the port one by one and then from the multiple data, the second option allows forming 16 bit ports using two bit, two bit ports and use 16 bit read or write operations So let's show us from the video. Introducing a microprocessor to a micro microprocessor to keyboard. So when you press a key on your computer, you are activating a switch. There are many different ways of making these switches, and all your construction and operation of some of the most common types. So mechanical key switches. In, me in mechanical switch keys, two pieces of metal are pushed together 
when you press the key, the actual switch elements are often made of a phosphor bronze alloy with gold plating on the contact areas. The key switch usually contains a spring to return the key to non pressed position and perhaps a small piece of foam to help damp out bones. Some mechanical key switches now consist. It consists of moulded silicon dome with a small piece of conductive rubber foam, short two traces on the printed circuit board to produce the key pressed signal. Mechanical switches are relatively inexpensive, but they have several disadvantages. First, they suffer from contact bounds. A pressed key may make the break contact several times before it makes solid contact. Second, the contacts may become oxidized or dirty with age so they have so they don't have longer make a dependence connection higher quality mechanical switches typically have a rated time rated lifetime of 1 million keystrokes the silicon dome time typically last 25 million strokes membrane key switches these switches are really a special type of mechanical switches. They consist of three layer plastic or rubber sandwich. The top layer of it has a conductive line of silver ink running under each key position. The bottom layer has a conductive line of silver ink running under each column of keys. So when you press a key, you push the top ink line through the hole to the contact the bottom ink line. The advantages of membrane keyboards is that they can be made as very thin, sealed units. They are often used on cash registers in fast food restaurants. The lifetime of membrane keyboards varies over a wide range. So capacitor key switches. A capacitor key switch has two small metal plates on the printed circuit board and another metal plate on the bottom of the piece of foam. So when you press the key, the movable plate is pushed closer to the fixed plate. This changes the capacitance between the fixed plates since a simpler
When you press the key, the movable plate is pushed closer to the fixed plate. This changes the capacitance between the fixed plates. Since amplifier circuitry detects this change in capacitance and produces a logic level signal that indicates a key has been pressed. The big advantages of the capacitor switch is that it has no mechanical contacts to become oxidized or dirty. So small disadvantages is specified circuitry needed to detect the change in capacitance. The capacitor, the capacitor key switches typically have a rated lifetime of about 20 million keystrokes. All effect key switches. This is another type of switch which, can, which has no mechanical contact. It takes advantage of the of the reflection of a moving charge by a magnetic field. So a reference current is passed through a semiconductor crystal between two opposing faces. When a key is pressed, the crystal is moved through a magnetic field which has its flux lines perpendicular to the direction of current flow in the crystal. So moving the crystal through the magnetic field causes a small voltage to be developed between two or two of the other opposing faces of the crystal. So this voltage is amplified and used to indicate that a key has been pressed. All effect sensors are also used to detect the motion in many electrically controlled machines. All effect keyboards are more expensive because of the more complex switch mechanism. But they are very dependable and have typically rated lifetime of 100 million or more keystrokes. So this is how the Hall effect was done. So keyboard circuit connections and interfaces. So how many types of keyboard switches are present? Yesterday we have discussed this topic. So can anyone tell me how many types of, so at least what types of keyboards are present? Thank you. 
So, there is no other types of keywords of present answer. This is the first topic only. No, no, please, not any keyword.
Please tell me what are the three tasks performed by a keyboard.
Most people, the key switches are connected in the matrix of rows and columns. So we use simple mechanical switches for our example. But the principle is same for for other type of switches. Getting input data from a keyboard it requires the following three major tasks: detect a key press, rebound the key press, and hold the key press. Three tasks can be done with hardware, software, or a combination of two, depending on the application. Software keyboard interfacing. So, circuit connection is longer than the column. Figure here shows how a hexadecimal keypad can be connected to a number of microcomputer ports. So, the three interfacing tasks can be done as a part of program. The rows of the matrix are connected to four output, output port lines. The column lines of matrix are connected to four input port lines. To make the program simple, the row, row lines are also connected to four input lines.
you have no know, to the to the column lines are very heavy by the you know persistent connected to plus by or pressing key connects to the column <laughs> So the low put on a row and a key if that row is pressed, then the low will appear on a column which contains that key. That key can be detected in the input port. If you know the row and column are pressed key, you then know which key is pressed. You can convert you can convert this information into into any code you want to represent that key. The following flowchart for a procedure to get rebounds and procedure the hex key, hex code for a plastic. An easy way to detect if any key in the matrix is pressed is to output zeros to all rows and then check the column to see if a key, a plastic key has connected to low. Connected a load to a column. In the order that we first output loads to all the rows and check the columns or or lower in the column are all high. This is done before the previous key has been released before before looking for the next one. In the standard key loop terminology, this is called two key load. So this is how it works. So this is how the detecting the bounce here column will be taking place. Next one is the column of four to be all high. The performance centers and the loop which waits until a loop appears on one of the columns indicating that the key has been pressed. Secondly, there's the detect task for, for us. A simple 20 minutes you can delay procedure there. Then does use the rebounds task. After the rebounds time, another check is made in order to see if the key is still pressed, if the columns are 
So once the cons are found, it found to be all high, the program enters another loop, which waits until a lower appears on one of the columns, indicating that a key has been pressed. This could the second loop does the detect task uh, uh, is a simple 20 millisecond delay procedure, then does the debounce task. After the debounce time, another check is made to see if the key is still pressed. If the columns are now all high, then no key is pressed. And the initial detection was caused by a noise pulse or a 
light brushing past a key. If any of the columns are still low, then the assumption is made that it was a valid key press. The final task is to determine the row and column of the pressed key and convert this row and column information to the hex code for the pressed key. To get the row and column information, a row a row is output of row output to the one of the row and the column are read. If none of the columns is low, the pressed key is not in that row. So the row is rotated to the next row and the column is checked again. The process is repeated until the row on a row produces a row on one of the column. The pressed key then is in the row which is low at that time. So the connection figure shows the byte read in the form and then and from the input port will contain a four bit code which represents the row of the pressed key and a four bit code which represents the column of the pressed key. Error trapping. The concept of detecting some error error conditions such as no match phone is called error trapping. Error trapping is a very important part of real programs, even in simple programs. Think, think what might happen with no error trap if two keys in the same row were pressed at exactly at the same time in a column code with two rows it was produced. So this code would not match with any of the row codes in the table. So after all the values in the table were checked, assigned register in programs would be decriminated from double O, double O, H2, double O, double O, double O. The compact decriminant cycle would continue through 65,536 memory locations until the change the value in memory location match with the row column code. The contents of the lower byte register at that point would be passed, passed back to the calling routine. The changes are the changes are in are one into six that would be the correct value for one of the first keys. You should keep a, keep an error trap in your program whenever there is a chance for it. So keyboard interfacing with hardware for the system where the CPU is too busy to be bothered doing these tasks in software and external device is used to do them. Once one of the MOS device which can we do this in, in the general instruments AY52376 which can be connected to the rows and columns of the keyboard switch matrix. The AY52376 independently detects a key press by cycling a lowdown through the rows and checking the columns. When it finds a key press, it waits, waits a rebound time. So if the key is still pressed after the rebound time, the AY52376 produces the 8-bit code for the first key and send it to the microcomputer port on eight parallel lines. The microcomputer knows that the valid ASCII code is on the data lines. The AY52376 outputs a stroke pulse. The microcomputer can detect the stroke pulse and read in ASCII code on a cold basis, or it can it can detect the stroke pulse on, on an interrupt basis. With the, with the interrupt method, the microcomputer doesn't have to pay any attention to the keyboard until it receives an interrupt signal. So this method uses a very little of microcomputer type. The AY52376 has a feature called two key rollover. This means that if two keys are passed, are pressed at nearly the same time, each key will detect it, debounced and converted to ASCII. The ASCII code for the first key and a stroke signal for it will be sent out. Then the ASCII code for the second key and a stroke signal for it will be sent out and compare this with two key logout. So this is the figure of port connections.
So next coming to exam. So interface of a four into four keyboard with L, like eight zero eight six using eight two double five. Thank you. 
So next one more. Next one is the higher order. The higher order lines of port A and port B are left unused. The address of port A and port B is respectively 8000 which and 8000 units when addressing the CWR with the address resources. The flowchart of the complete problem is as new. The compound word of this problem will be 82 bench core segments list is used for showing the program code. <laughs> Keyboards. Whenever a mechanical push button is pressed or raised, once the mechanical components of the key do not change the position smoothly. Rather, it generates a transient response. These transition variations may be interpreted as the multiple key pressure and responded according to the matter of the system. To avoid this problem, two schemes are searched. The first one utilizes the bystanding multi vibrator at the output of the two D bonds. The other scheme says the hyperparser should be made to meet the transition period so that the transition response settles down and reaches a steady state. So, a logic zero will be ready for the microprocessor when the key is pressed. In a number of high precision applications, a reason are made have two options. The first is to have more than one input port. And we will write the port one by one. And then from the multi byte data, the second option allows for 16 bit ports using two 8 bit ports and use 16 bit read or write operations. 
the example and the responses through the mechanical keyboards. Thank you very much for coming out of the very brief session.